I know. I know because I can't read without my glasses. Okay. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Centro Cha. Um, thank you all for coming here today. Uh, Centro Cha is a nonprofit organization. We exist with a mission um, to increase the quality source of programming that supports economic development for low-income families here in the city of Long Beach. Our vision is a thriving community, is one where investments for low-income communities and environments are a priority and where residents are connected, civically engaged, working and living in sustainable homes, schools and communities. We serve the underserved population of the city of Long Beach. Critical to our workforce development is employment for our youth and for our adults. We are proud to be early supporters of the Senator uh, Gonzalez's tech legislation that takes steps to lessen um, during discrimination in hiring practices. It is astounding that in 2020, that hiring dis discrimination hasn't improved in more than a quarter of a century. The same groups that continue to be denied equal access to employment and opportunity. We firsthand know this as Centro Cha and the work that we do through our workforce development programming. The proposed change is simple, but the impact would be dramatic. Employers that want to use newer assessments, tools that are proven to improve diversity outcomes will now be able to do so. This means that more of underserved populations, African American, Latino, Asian Pacific Islanders, um, will be able to have a fair shot at getting hired through this legislation. Now I am pleased and honored to welcome our Senator Lena Gonzalez back home to the city of Long Beach to share more information about her legislation. Thank you so much for being here and it's our pleasure. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you and good morning to everybody. I appreciate everyone who is here today. Um, especially as we introduce the Tech Equity for Competitive Hiring Act, which we call the Tech Act. It is co-sponsored by my colleagues, Assembly Members Reggie Jones-Sawyer and Mike Gibson and Senator Steve Bradford, who are all in the Los Angeles region. And I want to thank Jessica Quintana and every single person here from Centro Cha for hosting us today. We're so very lucky to have them, and we're have, uh, lucky to have them here doing the, the great work like workforce development throughout the Senate District. I'm also very excited to have Long Beach Councilwoman Mary Zendejas here to talk about the urgent need to update our state's hiring laws. And thanks to the members of the Fair Hiring Coalition for their hard work. We are here today in support of a common goal, to make sure all qualified job applicants have a fair shot at getting hired. Our state's hiring laws are based on federal guidelines that were introduced in 1978, more than four decades ago, certainly older than I am. And they have not been meaningfully updated ever since. The Tech Act will reform our state's hiring laws and help ensure that we end discrimination and bias in the hiring process. We cannot sit back and let generation after generation lose out on opportunities for higher wages, upward mobility, and stable careers. And while California is home to one of the country's most diverse populations, and we are the fifth largest economy, the laws do not protect all Californians from discrimination. Study after study has shown that women and people of color are more likely to be overlooked in the hiring process. And since 1990, we know that Caucasian applicants have received, on average, 36 more call percent more callbacks than black applicants and 24 percent more callbacks than Latino applicants, even with identical resumes. Another study also found that switching a candidate's name from female to male significantly improved ratings from professors reviewing resumes for STEM research positions. Again, it is unfair and unjust. Traditional hiring practices like restricti restricting jobs to internal referrals or graduates from top-tier universities further serve to exclude candidates from minority or lower socioeconomic backgrounds. And in the tech sector, especially where I used to work, the disparities for women and communities of color are especially even more stark. Only 3% of employees in high tech are black, and 6% are Hispanic, and only 36% are actually women. Hiring discrimination has not improved in over a generation, and now it is time to change that. 
That is why we introduced the Tech Act to realign our outdated hiring laws with Californian values. Employers using pre-hire tests that disproportionately exclude people of color and women are legally allowed to do so this day and age. So if those assessments are shown to be a valid predictor of job success, they will continue to do it. But in this day and age, there's no excuse for employers to be, unbi to be biased during hi hiring practice practices. And with recent advancements in data science and technology, employers now have access to assessment tools that are not only valid predictors of job success, but also eliminate bias in the hiring practice. And the Tech Act encourages the use of technologies that help, dis help end discrimination during these practices. The bill sets specific standards for testing technologies that remove bias in the hiring process, and it requires continuous monitoring of hiring assessment tools to ensure they do not adversely impact any demographic group. This proposed change in hiring laws is not only good for employers, but more importantly, it is great for job applicants. Everyone deserves the opportunity to be considered based on their experience and potential to succeed. The Tech Act is an important step to make California a beacon for upward mobility, and especially in a Senate district like I uh, represent, where we have a majority of Latinos, African Americans, and also Cambodian leaders, as well as people with different abilities, we absolutely need to do something now. And now I'd like to welcome our next speaker, our councilwoman here from the great city of Long Beach, Councilwoman Mary Zendejas. Thank you, Senator, and thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, thanks to Senator Gonzalez and the Fair, Housing, um, the Fair Hiring Coalition for introducing this important legislation to help prevent discrimination in hiring. I was recently elected to serve as the first district city councilwoman for the city of Long Beach. And I am the first Latina who uses a wheelchair to be elected to such office in the entire country. Like many others, throughout the course of my life, I have been faced with discrimination and adversity in hiring process. And I am excited about the opportunity that will help open up all of California's due to this Tech Act. We need to update the state protections to ensure a fair hiring process for all laws that reflect the priorities of our times, not the generations past. We value diversity in the workplace and we must create an equitably playing field. I worked at GNS Medical Supplies, a company owned and operated by people with various levels of disability, seen and unseen. As a founder of the Professional Abilities Association of America, an organization created for working professionals in the workplace, it has been my life work to create a more inclusive workforce. It was there where I worked closely with m many individuals with hidden disabilities. It is a great reminder that disability is not something that can always be seen and that in fact many people that have invisible disabilities have a harder time in the workforce. We have done a lot to address in in inequalities and provide workforce development opportunities for communities that have historically been discriminated against in the hiring process. But increasing access to education and job skills trainings are not enough. People need access to actual jobs. Despite the effort that hard work of communities, organizations represented in this room, there are still significant barriers for job applicants to be successful. I am thrilled for the Tech Act is being, and that it's being introduced to help end discriminatory um, in hiring process. The more we can support the use of technologies that are pr proven to remove biases from hiring, the more we will be able to help all Californians thrive in the workforce. I look forward to continuing our advocacy on this issue. Thank you so much for having me today. And now I'd like to invite our next speaker, Cesar Saldivar Mutz. 
Good morning. Uh, my name is Cesar Salivar Mat. I'm the director of the Southeast Community Development Corporation. And we are a, a, non a regional community and economic development nonprofit organization serving businesses and residents throughout the Senator's District since 1994. And um, currently, um, I'm honored to be here as a member of the Fair, uh, Housing Co uh, Fair Hiring Coalition and someone who has spent uh, his career working uh, in the Southeast area um, training our youth and uh, uh, young adults to become uh, um, workers in the tech industry um, with the uh, thanks of Senator, um, uh, with the Senator, uh, we were able to uh, grow our technology centers um, throughout our district and uh, train our residents and students into uh, coding, robotics. Uh, we just recently developed a maker space and, um, and, and built a multimedia room. And uh, these students are looking forward to uh, going to college and, uh, and, and working in the high-tech industry. However, we cannot burst their bubble if uh, they get the education, they get the experience, but cannot get the job. And so this legislation is very important to our residents and the future of many of our students. So thank you very much, Lena, for your uh, help in, uh, in authoring this legislation and moving it forward. Uh, thank you. And now I would like to introduce Sarah Kasser from the Senior, Senior Policy Research Analyst of Pymetrics. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here as a member of the Fair Hiring Coalition and as someone who has spent a considerable amount of time studying the degree of bias in our current hiring system. At Pymetrics, we are working to leverage the best of behavioral science and technology to better match employers with the right talent and to empower job seekers to identify their best fit roles. From our experience, we know that when employers are able to consider applicants based on their inherent traits and potential, rather than the demographic clues embedded in resumes and conventional hiring assessments, they end up with candidates who are much more likely to succeed in the long run and who better reflect the diversity in the community. In short, both quality and inclusion can be increased. But as long as there is uncertainty around how our old laws apply to new hiring tools, progress will be limited and talented people from minority and disadvantaged communities will continue to be left out. I want to thank and congratulate Senator Gonzalez for working to remove an obstacle that has stood in the way of, of equal employment opportunity for decades. And I'll turn it back over to the Senator. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for being here. We have a great coalition um, ready to take charge and lead of this uh, really important piece of legislation. Are there any questions from anyone? All right, if not, uh, we'll certainly be here afterwards for any questions, but thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it, and thank you again to Central Cha for having us here. Thank you.